Thank you for coming and thank you to the library for having this wonderful event and thank you so much for inviting me, Joe. I love, I love events that are a confluence of more than one art and here we have this intersection of visual art and spoken word and poetry and music and I think it, it talks about the connections between all of these different um, medium, media. I also want to say a quick word about Najib Joe Hakim. He's an incredibly talented artist who is unbelievably humble. So one of the things I invite you to do is make sure you look at the show and then just be noisy about it because he's not the best self-promoter, I have to say. And I really think that this would be like Time Magazine stuff. And I know how hard it is to self-promote, but I really, really admire his work and he was really instrumental in me getting the cover for This House, My Bones. I'm going to read two poems. One of them is not from This House, My Bones. It's a new poem. And both poems I'm going to read are based on visual images that I have seen. And the first one, Needlework, is one week of news about a year and a half ago. Remember when the, the girls were kidnapped in Nigeria and taken the Boko Haram people? It, it was that week. And there was a bunch of things going on with ISIS and with Palestine. And it was just one week before we were focusing on the nonsense that we're focusing on now, where the images of what was going on in the United States just started to go into my pores in kind of toxic ways. So I tried to find a healing for it. So this one's called Needlework, and it's broken up into four sections, and the first section is called LP. And I think everybody here is old enough to know what an LP is. Yeah, <laughs> preceded downloads, it's about this big. Okay, Needlework, number one. LP, a needle drop, one groove, aria. The mother's whalebone holler rocketing into mob song. Men in orange marched him onto the beach, a throat cut, bodies breathing beneath the sand, perforating, singe to ear. The cymbal clatter, the rumble, a collapsing not just of the building, not just the home, the bones in parched pilings. We want to refuse the blood-soaked terrain, the crack on the glass of his photograph, his brother shaved close for the camera, which is not different from gorillas hacking the bush and then their backs. Number two, tattoo. There is a chorus of ghost voices, of girls lost, puncturing in fine notes, silhouettes where we pull scarves low to avert youth and beauty and still, again, stolen. Seekers have lost their way, or perhaps incentive. For what are girls but little birds fallen from nests? Some forget, but their mothers would cut their faces over the wombs where heartbeats flushed. Three, injection. I cannot seal my eyes, nor block my ears. My veins raise, easy to find when one says food and another says gas, and another says my father burned before my eyes. Firecracker drones celebrate their inability to distinguish farmer from soldier, child from warrior. The warmth in the blood breeds dissidence. Flowing is dynamic, constant, poison moves fast, a terrifying addiction. Four, acupuncture. Decorate me with needles, stitch my mouth, embroider my forehead, give them all, my na all names distinct as their laughter or the way I shied even as they were gone. Pierce my chakras with their voices, run maps along my meridians where they were last seen alive. Track my chi and extract elegy. I choose remembering. It cuts the skin impatient morphs into the saddest story ever told. Again and again, and as small as this, we bleed and scar and bleed again. I have really upbeat work. <laughs> And the second and last poem I'm going to read uh, is based on an email from Suhair Hamad, who is another is a Palestinian poet, who, um, whose birthday is today, which is just coincidental. 
Uh, she was in Palestine making a film called Salt of the Sea. I don't know, does anybody remember that film? Yeah, so she was there, and they were the film crew was having trouble all the time. They were under siege all the time, and she was staying in Ramallah, and she had a favorite. Those of you who know Ramallah know the Nazareth Cafe. It's that one that's at the street that splits, and um, she used to go have her fool there every morning, and she sent me an email. While, she sent me an email almost every day while she was there, and she sent me this email. Three days ago, the Israeli special forces assassinated a young man who'd been wanted and in some kind of hiding in Ramallah. They shot him in the feet and in the back as he was leaving the Nazareth restaurant, my spot. I went by the next day to sit with the men, all whom greet me familiar now. They watched their friend walk out and then bleed to death for 45 minutes in front of their shop. The ambulance driver was shot trying to reach him. June 1st, 2007. After breakfast, what can you do but sit and survey the tracks where the ambulance had stopped yards away from the body and see the flies gather where the driver was struck by bullets? The smoke in the air lingers day old stale sorrow, the kind that settles into your throat, can't be coughed out even when singing the old songs that erupt from the chest, the roughest way out, the notes as hard as pebbles. Your hangout where the fool simmers fresh parsley and scallions in pots on blue flames throws a shadow on a map of blood drawn on the sidewalk where X, his feet are shot, and X, he is hit in the back, and X, the ambulance arrives, and X, the driver cannot navigate the storm of fire and fear, and X, the streets fill with mourners, a matter of course, the words fly, rocks, and melodies. Each body is its own island, and waters gather round, splashing against the shores, pushing a million heartbeats against the silence, exhaling a thousand zagluta, pumping into the lungs everything they have. Children are lost everywhere, and their bodies form land masses, a new diagram that must, must be inset into our geographies, so we know where we stand. Sip tepid water slow now. Wait for the beans to cool. The metal of the spoon stains your mouth, leaves sulfur on your tongue. You cannot eat here anymore, and you cannot leave. Thank you. <laughs>